Hi guys, welcome back to Psychology Sir. Today I'm recording my first proper content-based episode where we're going to introduce the ideas of social influence. Okay, so before we can get into any specific theories about social influence and look at some of those larger concepts, there are some key definitions and terms that you need to understand. These are phrases and words that I'm going to be using repeatedly throughout this topic and so you just need to be clear on exactly what I mean when I use these words. The first one that we're going to look at is conformity. Conformity is changing to fit in. Not because you have to, not because you're told to, but because you feel like you should. Other phrases which mean conformity or which you might find in an exam paper that are referring to it is things like yielding to group pressures or fitting in with social norms, social conformity, um, all those things are all kind of talking about this issue. You are giving up or changing what your normal behaviour would be to fit in, usually with, uh, with a pressure or kind of a norm that you are seeing. The classic example of conformity would be in a situation where peer pressure is going on. Now, sometimes peer pressure is a specific command where you are told to do something. But more often, it's more of a subconscious, subliminal influence where a person picks up on the expected behaviour by observing what their friends are doing. No one actually tells you you have to do it, but you feel like you should. So, for example, if you are at school and hanging out with your friends at break time and they all kind of loiter around when the bell's gone and don't get to lessons on time, then you are fairly likely to conform with that group norm to drag your feet and not go to a lesson on time when perhaps you normally would have done if you hadn't have had that influence of the people around you. Now the second one of these concepts that we're going to talk about is collective and crowd behaviour. And those two phrases are often going to be used interchangeably because they're very, very similar. This is when a group or a crowd of people are acting together. And it's different from a small group because a small group situation, each individual feels like they have some personal control or influence or sway in that group. Once a group gets large enough, however, every individual loses a sense of control. No one feels like they individually can make a difference or can change the behaviour of that crowd. Just having a load of people in the same place is not crowd or collective behaviour. When you go, for example, into a town centre, there are tons of people, but that's not collective behaviour because everyone's doing their own separate thing. What makes it collective behaviour and crowd behaviour is when the people have come together for a common purpose or for a particular reason. So, for example, the behaviour at a football match is collective or crowd behaviour because the people presumably the supporters of either team, are there to support their team, they're going to chant, they're going to sing, they're all there for kind of the same reason. Uh, another example would be in a riot. Now, most of the people who are rioting are there engaged in the similar kind of activity. Now, you might have the same number of people in a town centre when there's a riot going on and when it's in just a normal day, but obviously that is going to look very different. Crowd behaviour is where the people are acting together, usually for some kind of similar purpose, although they might each be completing different individual tasks. So the third one of these phrases, which we're going to use very often, is we're going to talk about antisocial and pro-social behaviour. Now, antisocial is something that we use very often, usually in the right context, and so I don't think that's too difficult of a concept. Pro-social is, uh, I guess, a more uncommon phrase to use, but it's essentially opposite ends of the same spectrum. Antisocial and prosocial are just a way of describing whether a particular behaviour has a cost or a benefit to society. Antisocial behaviour we would usually describe as something that cause, causes alarm or distress, something such as uh, graffiti or uh, vandalism. Prosocial behaviour is something which is a benefit to society, so something like picking up litter, helping someone cross the road, engaging in charity work, things which are just generally good for other people. 
And the final one I'm going to explain in this section is obedience. Now, obedience, again, is a very common word. It's a common phrase. We talk about it all the time. And that is basically following orders. It is doing what you are told to do almost always by someone who you uh, who has authority over you. Now, often this gets confused with conformity because both of these can um, cause you to change your behavior. However, conformity is where it's kind of a choice. It's something you feel you should or you feel you want to do. Obedience is where you do something usually more specific because you're told to do that exact thing and there's often a consequence attached to that, either something that you will get if you do it or something that you will, uh, so a reward or a punishment for not being obedient in that situation. Now, it's important to understand with obedience that it can be good or bad. Obedience is usually a useful and a productive thing in society because generally speaking, those in authority have the best interests of society at heart. So the things they ask us to do actually kind of work and they're useful and society requires obedience to function. Without obedience, you have anarchy, everything's crazy. And while that might sound fun for a little while, it means that you have no guarantees of security in the future. Obedience is very important. However, there are times when people have been expected to do terrible things. They've been expected to obey orders which have led to atrocities being committed, um, the Second World War, the Nazi concentration camps, things like that. And we will talk a little bit more in those uh, about those later. If you haven't already, now would be a good time to pause the video and just to record these simple kind of bullet point definitions I've given you, just as little prompts, 